Task Scheduling There are two basic daemons for scheduling tasks on a Linux system. The first, the AT command, utilizes the AT daemon, or ATD. It is for scheduling commands to be executed once at a specific time. The second, CronTab, utilizes the Cron daemon, or CronD, to execute repetitive or chronic scheduled tasks. Here's an example of using the AT command to schedule a single instance commands to run at a certain time. At the prompt, I would type the time, followed by the month, and then the day of the month. After this, I would receive an AT prompt. I would type my commands one by one, followed by enter, at each AT prompt. When I was done, I would press Ctrl D. This would exit the AT command and take me back to my regular prompt. There are two special AT switches you may find especially useful. The first one, AT-L, lists AT jobs and gives their job IDs. The second one, AT-C, followed by the job ID, would list the job's contents. Example, if I type AT space dash C space 1, that would show me the job contents for AT job 1. Note, in Fedora, if ETC AT.allow and ETC AT.deny don't exist, only root can run the AT command. In Fedora, you must create these files. We're going to look at um, you know, automating or scheduling commands on a Linux system. There's two basic ways to do that. You can use the AT daemon with the AT command, and that's for commands you only want to happen once, um, you know, or infrequently. Um, and then there's also the cron daemon, where you'd use the cron tab command and make cron tab false. And that's for commands that happen fairly repetitively or on a scheduled basis, such as maybe you want to back up the system on a Tuesday or Thursday evening, something like that. So let's take a look at the first option. And um, if I want to create, you know, use the AT daemon and create an AT job, I would just use the AT command. And this is sort of a once only, far and forget timed event. So let's set it for somewhere in the near future. It's 724 if you can see the clock there. So I'm going to make this for 726 and AM. It's a 12 hour time and January 11th is the date, 2011 by default. And I'm just going to touch a file and I'm going to call this um, output one and I'm going to have it display the date. I'm going to redirect it to that file, output one. In this case, I'll redirect it to the file. I'm going to do Control D, and that'll exit it. And if I were to use AT-L, that would list any AT jobs I have queued up. And I could do AT-C and the job number, which in this case is eight, and that would show me the commands that are going to execute when that happens. And if I do a listing, notice that out one does not exist yet. But let's wait for that future event. In this case, for the clock to strike 7:26 and it should touch and produce that file and then it should call the date command and send the results to the file and I'm waiting and I'm waiting so we've gone over AT while we're waiting let's just review we've gone over AT we've gone over AT-L to list AT jobs and we've gone over AT-C space a job number to list the contents of specified job all right, it's 7.26 now, and if I list it, um, there I have output 1, and let's cat it. So let me do output 1, and then there's the date there, exactly 7.26, okay? So that's one example, and let's do one more AT job. Again, for the near future, um, I'm going to try to set this one for 7.27, if I can get it finished fast enough. So January 11th, and I'm just going to ping... Yahoo. All right, and it's 7:26, and I won't see the output. This sort of gets carried out as a background process by the AT daemon, but we'll grep for it. Remember, we specified that that would happen at 7:27. We're going to ping Yahoo, and let's grep for the ping command. Right now, there's no ping command running. That's just grep right there. It's 7.27. I'm going to hit the up arrow. Now notice that it's pinging Yahoo. So as soon as the clock struck 7.27, the AT daemon launched that job. And of course, let's be polite and not flip ping Yahoo, so I'm going to kill it on 57.42. Thank you, Yahoo, for the echo replies. So that's just an example of using the AT command. Additionally, with the AT command, there are two basic text configuration files that work with it. 
um, there's an AT allow, and if there's not an AT allow, you can still run AT, but you have to run it with root privileges. So you've either got to be root, or you've got to substitute root privileges. Um, and in Ubuntu, there is a default AT deny. And if I were to if I were to cat that, actually, I'm going to need sudo because of the permission set up on the file. But you can look at all of the daemons and processes that are denied access to running the AT command. And again, you know, just for security reasons, um, you know, system security reasons, there, but those are all part of the AT deny file. So AT allow and AT deny, and you can add users or you know remove users to determine who can and who cannot run AT commands on your system.